Hey everybody, Alan Necessary here from Appalachian Baits. In this video, we're going to cover a lot of tips uh, that you can do over the winter season to prepare for next year's fishing season. Or if you just got a weekend, you ain't got nothing to do and it's been raining all day and you just want to do some things, we're going to show you some tips. First thing I want to start off with is stringers. Now, uh, a lot of, there's a lot of different types of stringers out there. There's chain stringers, there's rope stringers. I prefer a chain stringer, and the reason for a rope stringer, when you thread it through the trout skills, uh, they don't live long, plus they get blood on them. You gotta wash them out, and they tend to stink. And if you've got a lot of trout and they twist up on it, it's just hard to get off, but to each their own. But I like the chain stringer now. Most chain stringers, they'll have, uh, all these all the way down through them. Now, what I do is I take them off the chain and I'll take these snaps and I've got an inch and a half O-ring here that I put to the last one. Now, one of my field staff reps, Mark Hess, is the one that turned me on to this and showed me this and it makes sense. If you've got all these snaps up through here that you're putting your trout on and you're laying it down in the water, some of your trout don't go all the way in the water sometimes You'll, you'll have them down kind of deep, but if you put them all at the end and you put your snaps on there, when you lay your trout in the water, you can be rest assured that all of them are gonna be at the end of the snap in the water. And another tip for you, if you're fishing a pond, make sure that you got your fish all the way, as far as you can away from the bank down in the water because pond water, the closer to the bank you get, the warmer it is than the de deep water. So that's what it looks like. And I put eight hooks on mine because uh, some areas allow you to have eight trout, others have six, so I just put eight on there. Uh, one thing we covered, and we've covered some of this on our Facebook videos, but another thing was um, you're out there fishing and you keep breaking your line, you don't know why, or you're feeling your, your line and it's frayed. One thing you can do is take a dry Q-tip and what you wanna do is go around each one of your eyelets on your, your rod and closely inspect those. And if you get any hair or any of the cotton from the Q-tip that's sticking there, you might have uh, a notched uh, eye on your rod. And do that all the way down. If you don't have that, go to your reel and go around the bell housing, the bell sprint housing here, your bell, and then go around the lip of your reel and check and make sure that you don't have any nicks or anything in that. I know a lot of people, they use, uh, they drive pickup trucks and they fish and I've seen them going uh, fishing and they've got rods hanging back over the tailgate. As you're driving down the road and that wind's vibrating, a lot of times that'll, that'll rub your, your line too and it'll cause it to break. Um, another tip, uh, if you go to some of your big box stores like Walmart uh, and you want to go fish like a an area that's single hook only and it's got to be barbless, and I know a lot of people are going to say this right off the bat. They're going to say, well, I just take pliers and pinch my barb down. Well, we all know we've run into game wardens that are to the rule that a pinch barb is not going to get you out of a ticket if you're fishing where you know, you've got to have barbless hooks. Just about everybody I know has one of these little Dremel tools. So if you're sitting there watching TV in between commercials and you want to make you a barbless hook, I'm going to use one of our 1 16th uh, jig hooks. And you can get a smaller stone than this to fix your Dremel tool. But I've got my barb there. I hope you can see that. And it just takes a few seconds. You just made yourself a barbless hook. So instead of sitting there on Amazon trying to order some or going to some fly shop and trying to get them, make your own. You can sit right there and do it in no time and you got a barbless hook. We're all about saving money. So one of the things that I do is, and I hope you can see this, in the head of this critter, there's a hole where I've been using it. Uh, a lot of times we'll be using jigs, worms, whatever, and it doesn't matter what plastic you use, but after you slide 
something like that over a keeper, it'll tear a hole in it. Well, don't throw that bait away. All you gotta do is have your pair of pliers and one of these that just about everybody's got for a grill. And the key to it's not putting the flame up on the tip. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna close that bad boy back up. Just hold that flame there a little bit. As soon as it catches fire, blow it out. You ain't got no hole anymore and you don't have to buy another one. You just smelted that back so you can put a hook over it and you can fish with it again. Fish don't know the difference anyway. Another thing, this here is off of a beetle spin grub and I'm just using this for an example. This come three out of a pack. You see those black lines on there? Well, you want to imitate that? Here's an Appalachian Baits Mountain Critter. And I want to make that, that black line on there. They sell these Sharpies in assorted colors. You're out in the boat. You want to add a little color to it. All you got to do is just draw your line on there and it don't have to be perfectly straight. Fish ain't seeing the line. And I mean, you can color the, the head of these baits red or whatever you want to do if you want to add some color to them. And that's all you got to do right there. So get yourself a pack of Sharpies if you're, if you're on the creek bank or somewhere or you ain't got a certain color and you want to do something like that. That way you can give your bait just a little bit more color, a little bit more presentation. So that's just some tips I wanted to go over with you. Uh, don't throw your plastics down on the ground. Take care of your rod. Uh, make your chain stringer. Put all your, your snaps down at the end. I mean, just little bitty tips that'll help you out and uh, along the way while you're out there fishing. This is Alan Necessary with Appalachian Baits. We'll see you on the creek bank.